I told you I was going to bring you back a surprise, a wonderful surprise, a sweet surprise. I brought you Patricia Williams from District Restaurant in New York. And Patricia, today you're going to show us something wonderful, a dessert. What is they going to make for us? This is called clafouti. It is one of my favorite desserts. Would you repeat desserts. the name alone? Clafouti. I must say, you, just the way you say it, you bring to it such a sweetness, a natural wonderfulness that I must know about it. What is it again? It's a very simple dessert with a very complicated name, and you can... It has so many variations you can use, and it's my favorite dessert because it was the first dessert I ever had when I went to Paris for the very first time. So it has a very symbolic value to it. Very, very but symbolic. But do you think that people at home can, you know, usually when we think of French desserts, uh, we always think of complicated heavy-duty creams and reductions and things of the sort. Is this something that just about anyone at home can do? Anyone at home. It only has five ingredients to it. Five? But five. That's it. Okay, it's got, an incredible. I have to see this. So you guide me through it. I'll be okay. your assistant. You tell me exactly what it is, and uh, I see a selection of fruit. Go on. You take and it over. And the versatility from here. of this, you can use anything in season. But now we have stone fruits. You have this beautiful nectarine, some pluots, apricots, red plums. Down here you have some cherries. You can use all of these one of these, or if it's strawberry season, pineapple season. In France, they always use cherries. The pits have not been taken out of. No? No. It's a dessert from Brittany. It's wonderful. I think we'll take the pits out of this one. I think we should try that. <laughs> yes, yes. I can see lawsuits coming down the hill. Exactly. No, <laughs> none of that. None of that. No, you're very comfortable with the way you're talking about the fruit. And uh, I must say, after so many years working in the kitchen myself, one of the things that I'm ignorant about is myself to be able to pick the best food. When you're looking at these fruits, what are some of the insights that you can give to our friends at home? One of the, what to look for? One of the things you always want to do is smell it. Okay. I mean, it's a one, if it has a wonderful aroma to it, and you can go into, when you go to the market, you can really smell the peaches, or when you go, go by the pineapples, you smell the pineapples. So that's one of the first thing you do is to smell it. Then you want to make sure it's not too hard, a bit of firmness to it, not too soft, no spots. That's a very important part, and you're making a point. Uh, you glimmer when you say it on the not-too-soft side, because one of the falsehoods about fruit, I think sometimes when they say, oh, if it's soft, it's ripe, it's ready to be eaten now, that's not necessarily true when it comes to and this. And sometimes it's not, and particularly peaches, the area I grew up in, you would have peaches, and you would just be like drooling the juice all down your chin. It was delicious. It was wonder, my most favorite things. That, any kind of melon being from that very warm, uh, climate, climate. Texas. Are you from? You're from Texas? I'm a Texas girl. Well, I gotta say, uh, you, I, I would not have guessed that. <laughs> I would not have guessed that, but uh, well, let's go on because I don't want to hold you back. So we have this wonderful fruit before us. Uh, once you collect all this bounty of freshness, what is the next thing that you do? Well, we're going to start the recipe. I'm just going to move this over here a bit. All right. And as I say, the recipe is very simple. We're going to take some softened butter, room temperature. That's important to me. Can Absolutely. That, right away, madam. And we're going to go into our blender here yes. and then confection it sugar. Some people refer to it as 10x. And we're going to put that into it as well. Then always start the, the uh, mixer low. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're going to have <clears throat> powdered sugar all over us. Yes, uh, <laughs> it might not be so difficult for you, but I'm wearing black, and uh, you know right. how many times I've actually been accused of looking like Santa Claus? For many reasons. Mm. But, uh, so, um, and again, this is a very simple recipe. You're just combining them until it's a little bit fluffy. That's now, if you don't have such a gifted machine as this, what would you suggest for people um, I would use do? just a regular whisk or a fork, the okay. way you, one made pastries years ago when you would mash because them. Something of old, long absolutely. before people had these incredible or machines. Your two hands work very, very well. Now, when you're using your hands, because the butter is softened up, you want to wet it even softer than what you put it in, almost a cream like consistency yes. before you so use it? Yes, so it's nice and creamy. Um, otherwise, it won't have, if it's too hard, it won't dissolve properly. So it has a lot of, you'll have a lot of lumps. And that looks really good there. This is I the consistency you like to have? That's the consistency we have. Okay, we let have. me disengage it. Let me tell you, what else can I do next uh, to okay, help you with this? Okay, we're going to add the almond flour. Almond now. flour. Now, I like, some recipes for clafouti call for regular flour. I prefer the almond flour because it adds a little bit of texture to it. Um, uh, forgive me for a moment. I, I'm listening spellbound, and there are two things that I love about this. One is the way in which you talk about things. You have an inner elegance that does not come from being a chef. There must be more to your story <laughs> than just being a chef. So I, I need to ask you, what, what were you before you were a chef? I was a professional ballet dancer. 
and I moved from Texas. No, ballet dancer, we are accustomed to think as very delicate things. You survive in a kitchen as a ballet dancer? Oh, you think we're just little, very, very meek people? No, 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 no. Very difficult. Very, very difficult. strenuous. Very a lot strenuous. Of very, very uh, sophisticated. You have to. The head goes here. The eyes go there. The feet go there. You turn over there. You run around twice. You do this. You jump as high as you can, and you land on one foot. But now so, you you injure yourself, uh, yes, I assume. Yes. And I mean, working in a kitchen is not easy. I mean, obviously, it's not as pirouetting, it's not as uh, as demanding on the type of exercising that you do. But nevertheless, you're on your feet all day long. There are ungodly hours, as we all well right. know. But you have two feet, <laughs> and you don't have to go on points. So and how did you start? Easier. How did you start? I mean, it was right uh, on I... the line, or uh, you kind of work your way from uh, the front of the house to the back of the house. Actually, when I came back from France, I decided that I wanted to be a chef. So what I did was I went to the only three-star American restaurant ever to exist, and I said, this is what I know how to do, and I was hired immediately. What is that you knew how to make at that point? Nothing. <laughs> no. At least you were truthful. No. My <laughs> I mean, job... people fudge you know, their resumes right. no, just to get no, a job. No, you no, actually I said the truth. And I said, can't do anything. So my first job was to put things on a plate, desserts. I couldn't make them. I couldn't do anything. I could only put, take the dessert, design it, and put it on the plate. I know the people watching at home, they must be upset with me because, <laughs> you know, Nick, I was writing this down that she's telling what to do and you're stopping it. My fault. Why don't we continue? You were talking about, but by the way, that is fascinating. Well, I must know more about this later. This is the almond flour you were right. saying. If you don't have almond flour, you can make it in a Roboku yourself. Okay. Just add a little bit of flour to some uh, almonds okay. and pulse it. Otherwise, if you over mix it, you're going to end up with almond butter. Perfect. Which is quite good, but it's not for But it's for not this. what we want to use. It's like yes. peanut butter, almost right. a variation of Again, it. we're going to put uh, the almond flour in here. Here, hold this for you. Thank you. And we'll start the blender off slowly. Right. So again, we don't have almond flour all over You're us. On. So. Well, of course, it would help if I was to lift this. I'll take the bowl. You fluster me. You fluster <laughs> me. So you're just basically mixing that together. You don't want to over mix it, but you just mix it together. You can see how it's coming together. Wonderfully and the consistency well. is really very nice. So I think we can take that out of the bowl, turn it off now. Okay. And um, could you please hand me those eggs? Right away. Thank you. Now I'm going to take the eggs and add cream to it. And just with the whisk, you're just going to whisk it in. Okay. Should I disengage this now? Yes, please. Oh, I'll hand you the whisks, uh, the uh, oh, spatula. There I am. Let's know what. Okay. Let me put this away over here. Actually, I'll do the spatula, I'll hold it, and you can pull it in. Okay. So you do it at the amount that you like. You can do it in the mixer if you like, but I always like. I think this is more of an interaction. It is, way. it is, and you get the feel of it. We're just going to do a little bit of it at a time. You get the feel of the batter too. You don't want to. One of the things people make a mistake in pastries is over mixing. Over mixing things, yes. You know, particularly any kind of flour because it, the gluten in it. And, and like pancake batter, anything the, like that, people over mix it. When you're working with a machine, there's always the temptation of putting it up to the next beat to get it right, faster. Right. And then when as a result, that not necessarily is the result that we want to begin with. Absolutely. So then we're just going to finish putting the rest of this in. Oops. Oh, don't worry. That, that's just exactly what happens <laughs> to me at home when I try to, to get involved with this. Okay, I'll give you the spatula Perfect. back. Perfect. I'll move this away. And we're just going to continue to mix this in. And as you can see, this is a like, very, very simple recipe. Yeah, you're very delicate. You're paying attention to it. You're trying to break the clumps so that they incorporate it. You want, you're looking for a very smooth finish, mm -hmm. or you like to have some of you this want a clumping bit in of, there. You want a little bit of clumping, a little bit of texture to it. Uh, it helps uh, to hold the shape. Okay. So it rises quite nicely. And I think just now a pinch of salt, and that's it. Always put a little pinch of salt in in your sweetnesses because it brings out a little bit more of the There's flavor. a nice balance in between the super sweet and, and the salt. And, Absolutely. Uh, very delicate way to really make the two of them play with right. each other. Let me hold this for you. What's okay. the next thing we're going to do? I think we're going to just place it in the pan there. You know, and we have sprayed I, this with Pam. I am a complete Pam. klutz right now. I, uh, I must say that uh, I'm like very excited to be here. I'm looking at this and uh, uh, 
Tell me what to do next, and I'll try to do it without dropping anything. Well, we can just pour it in here. Just this? Just that. Okay, here we go. Very nice. Move I'm just going to sit this over here, and let's talk about how we're going to cut some of the fruit. Allow me to clean the area. <laughs> it's a little mess that I made myself. My wife tells me all the time I am kind of messy in the kitchen. So I just cut all the way around the pit. Mm -hmm. And then it just comes off like that. And then you can just take the seed out and lay it over there. Then, as we cut, just in nice, straight down, so that when you put it on, you just make all the way very around simple, on top. Very, very simple, elegant. very elegant. A firm technique. You know, I think we have some of the fruit placed here already. Yes, we do. Because and we can... I don't want to push you through to cut it all. And uh, what I'll do, I will move this back out here. And uh, I will be your palette. And you ah, will collect wonderful. the pieces and you'll put it aside. Now, while she's doing this and putting it together, we're going to do two things. We're going to decorate it nicely. Then we're going to put it in the oven. And when it's ready, we're going to come back. I'm going to show you exactly how to present this at your family table to show you how to turn your home into your favorite restaurant. Stay tuned, please. Patricia, I think it's about time for our friends to see exactly how it is that you display this uh, uh, for the enjoyment of your guests. So why don't you give us some ideas on how to actually serve this? I will. Well, with the first clafouti, we're going to serve it family style. Perfect. And we're going to take just a little bit of creme fraiche. You can use sour cream. The only difference with sour cream and uh, creme fraiche is that the butter fat content is a bit higher. But it is a cultured milk. And just a little bit of powdered sugar over the top. And now when you bring this at home, exactly as it is, we need to remind our friends that this is to be served cold, not just still warm from the oven, really. You can serve it either way. You can serve it cold, and that's what's so versatile about it. Serve it cold or uh, warm, hot, room temperature. Well, let's say now you have something special. You have an important date. You have a boss that you want to impress. So maybe like me, you get in trouble with your wife and you really need to find something that will give you munitions to say, honey, please forgive me. Trust me, for all of you married men out there, uh, learn this word. Yes, dear, it will help you. <laughs> 25 years married, I know exactly how effective the word is. So next time I get into trouble with okay. my wife, Nancy, how would I present something this wonderful and uh, make it look beautiful? Can you just put this over I'd be there delighted for me, please? To, right away. And we're going to, and if you'll hand me this dish, please. Here we are with We're the going to put it on an individual plate. Okay. And you can just cut into it the same way you would a pie. Mm hmm. You know, cut it into pieces. So we're just going to take one wedge out of this and take it out and place it on the plate. May I have the fruit, please? Right away. I'll trade. We'll take it over here and we'll place some of the fruit on top. So you have your nice wedges. Again, we'll use different types of fruit. Now, we when can... we were talking in the break, you actually were teaching me how to say that it's not clafouti or clafouti. There's a, a wonderful French way to say the name of this. What is it's it? It's so delicate. Clafouti. Clafouti. And Nancy, I'm making for you clafouti. <laughs> It sounds like a cloud, though, doesn't it? It's very, very light dessert. It's too. a very light dessert. What I like about the fact is that the greeniness of the almond uh, uh, flour that we put in right. there uh, is still reflective as you cut it and you broke it. You know, I saw a lot of greeniness to it, but the greeniness, though, once you interact with it, once you start right. biting it, it's the sweetness of it that really gives a body, and that's what we're looking that's for. That's what we're looking for. This is why I prefer to use the almond flour as opposed to just regular flour, because I like that texture. Okay. And all the fruit offers that. And then when you put the fresh fruit back on there, it really offers even more. So, again, we'll top this off with a little, you know, we can make a canal if we wanted to. But we'll top it off with just a little bit of uh, creme fraiche. Excellent. Now, again, uh, just a bit of powdered sugar, or 10x, as they say in the business. And I think on the very top of that, we'll go some of the beautiful cherries. There are so many different brands of cherries, too. You have the Queen Anne cherries. Mm -hmm. There's so many different kinds of cherries. 
Well, I love the way in which you're accurately taking a slice. I'll tell you this, when my eyes first met with a slice, I said, hmm, it's not perfect looking. But I think that is the point. It's not that this is about perfect looking, it's what it tastes like. Then with the combination that you put in, you really created a wonderful painting. And for all of you watching at home, and I hope that uh, you're learning something, so many times it's not exactly that it has to look perfect, but as you put it together, make sure that it tastes great. I'll see you next time right here with new friends and new recipes. Ciao a tutti. To learn more about Chef Stolino, his guests, and this series, including recipes, stories, and culinary tips, visit us online at nickstolino.com. The companion cookbook to Nick Stolino Cooking with Friends is available for $34.95 plus shipping and handling. A DVD containing selected recipe demonstrations from this series is also available. To order, please call one 800 937-5387 or visit us online at nickstolino.com.